Hello viewers, this week's Daily Race C gives us a huge change in Gran Turismo. As you can see, 50 minutes required for this event. That means a 20 lap race around Suzuka. So it's good to see some experimentation from Polyphony, but let's jump in and see how this plays out. As for the car, I'm gonna be driving the BMW M6 and we're gonna be driving around Suzuka, of course. This is a bit of qualifying just before we jump into our first race. I wanted to do some qualifying just to make sure we don't start at the back and have to do too much work. Although, given that it's an endurance race, it is possible to fight through from the back. Anyway, this qualifying lap was a 159.289. That lap has put me fourth on the grid. A lot of people using the M6 as well. So here we go, guys. A 40-minute, let's say, endurance race on Gran Turismo 7 as Daily Race C. Let's jump in. Let's hope we can have a good first race. And here we go then. 40 minutes of racing ahead of us. 20 laps off Suzuka, away we go, and it's almost like an anti-climax at the start of these races because given that it's so long, there's no need to really go crazy and start fighting everyone and start trying to do all your overtakes on the first lap. You have plenty of time for that. So this represents an interesting change from Polyphony. There have been a couple of occasions in recent months whereby they have made Daily Race C let's say double the length that it usually is. After only a few days, they would change it back to the normal, let's say, in inverted commas, normal length, under 30 minutes. On this occasion, the time required for the event is actually 50 minutes. And therefore, it seems as though this is a fully deliberate change from polyphony, which is always interesting to see. And it, and it kind of continues a trend, I suppose, of in recent months recent weeks they seem to be experimenting a little bit more with the format and which tuning parts you're allowed to change there do seem to be some changes some experimentation going on and this one personally for me was very welcome anyway at the end of lap number two settling into this race not really much in terms of a change of position as you can see top six in the same order as they were at uh, the start of the race the leader there very, very quick indeed. I noticed his qualifying lap was about a second quicker than mine. And therefore, no surprise to see that driver pulling away at the front. But we sat here nicely in fourth. And it was by lap three here. Where I was just beginning to make a couple of small mistakes with Degna 2. Just cutting the corner way too much, turning in far too early. And that's going to hand me a 0.5 second penalty. And we can see behind we have two very close players and therefore this could be quite problematic I could drop down a couple of positions here as the penalty line is just after spoon curve which we are just coming up to now and so I'm probably going to drop these two positions immediately behind to the Porsche and the Mustang but given that this is a lengthy race there is time to fight back and that is the beauty of it it is really good to be able to get into a, a rhythm during the race to put some consistent laps down and try to um, move your way up the order by doing that. Here we go then, serving the penalty. Very, very painful indeed. And given that these guys were very consistent in keeping immediately behind me, they managed to profit from my mistake and from my penalty. And that is all part of the game. So right now, end of lap three, right up behind the Mustang. Key 25, fighting through from the back of the pack. Roughly three seconds behind, there he is in the red BMW M uh, M6, I was about to say M3, but it's not an M3, as uh, we begin lap number four, four out of 20, and um, it was now a case of trying to fight back, if we could at least keep up with the Mustang and the Porsche just in front, Porsche with really good traction, the BMW seemed to be a very solid car for this race, there's no question about it, but it wasn't strong on all parts of the track especially the slower corners it seemed quite clunky but we're going to try and do our best ghost there in third place making a mistake and he's going to lose a position there i think to the mustang as you can see key 25 over the course of a couple of laps here around uh, we're on laps number seven now he has managed to get that gap uh, slowly down and it's now right on my tail but there's no need to panic here it's actually a somewhat easy track to defend especially in this first sector through the s's they're not really much in the way of overtaking opportunities through this part of the track 
as long as the person in front doesn't really make any glaring errors, you're probably going to have to stay behind for the time being. Consistency is okay at this point. All of my lap times, or most of them, within two minutes, something. But I think you ideally need to be in the, in the 59s, at least in the low 59s, to be getting sort of race winning pace, which Key has done so far, and that's the reason why he's right on my tail from the back of the pack already. And I suppose that's the beauty of, let's say, a 40 minute race. The idea that you can fight through if you have a bit of a gap or made a mistake or you've been crashed off at the beginning there are laps there are t there is time for you to regain uh, lost ground the interesting thing about this race uh, or one factor of it is it is still only a 16 player race it's, this is still a downside of Grand Turismo 7 multiplayer or sport mode the fact that we only have a maximum limit of 16 players in Daily Race C and it can feel a little bit empty, especially if a couple of players left, uh, leave the lobby. One player has already left, so we're down to 15. And this is one of the downsides compared to GT Sport especially, which had 20 player lobbies. So it'd be great to see an, an improvement on that front. And um, let's hope something like that happens soon. But it has been near enough two years that this game has been out. And so it's quite intriguing to see these changes being made now. Anyway, a key 25 pitting behind so he's going for the undercut he's going to try and jump us by getting onto the fresher tires early and i'm going to go past ghost who had made a mistake once again on the exit of the final chicane there we're going to move back into fourth position where we started the race in terms of strategy you're looking at pretty much just a one-stop race somewhere between roughly lap 8 and lap 12. Uh, probably most people are going to go in on lap 9 or 10 roughly halfway into the race and I'm going to do exactly that I'm going to go in here at the end of lap number nine putting to the right hand side here being very careful in this pit lane entry which can be quite awkward if you go in there a little bit too hot changing over to a fresh set of mediums and looking at that I mean I have just under 11 laps of fuel remaining and once I leave the pit lane we do have just under 11 laps of the race left to do I'm not going to bother refueling I could try and save a little bit of fuel in the second half of the race and that should get me through to the end. There is Key 25 as we exit the pit lane. He is just going to get through. And that is the power of the undercut. Goes in two laps earlier than I did. He went in at the end of lap seven. Myself, the end of nine. And so the result of that is a change in positions here. So down to seventh. But let's not forget the top three, or sorry, top four have not pitted at this point. No, sorry, top three have not pitted. Not sure about fourth. We'll see. But we still have some positions to gain back. Starting this race in fourth. And so we're ideally going to try and move forward from there onto the podium. Now I have noticed that uh, Ape there in fifth. At one point at the start of the race I was right behind him. But then I did get dropped in that first half of the race. But we, we still have ten laps here left to go to try to catch back up. And this is a good position to be in here just behind key i could kind of use him as a bit of a pace setter try and sit in the slipstream as we kind of work together here to try to catch back up with the pack in front so even though i did lose quite a lot of ground there on that first stint with the penalty and losing a couple of positions and just general inconsistency it was my first race of the day i'd just woken up and i wasn't driving my best then i know that once i've warmed up a little bit here i could try to improve and pull back into this second half of the race key 25 with a mistake there out of spoon curve i'm not going to go for the move here there's no point in fighting and losing too much time i'm just going to settle in behind and just tuck into the slipstream um second and third going into the pit lane ghost in the porsche remaining out and therefore taking the lead of the race for the time being could be a little bit too long on one stint but we shall see you can see Goldie there coming out of the pit lane at the other end of the main straight. So we're a good sort of eight, nine seconds behind him. As now the Mustang comes out just in front with, quite crucially, a three second penalty for cutting the pit entry line. And that is going to be crucial in a race as close as this. Can't we really be affording to lose a three second penalty is really, really catastrophic. I mean, you even saw my half second penalty 
was not ideal. I lost two positions because of it. But a three second really does kill your momentum and it is very difficult to uh, recover that amount of time. So we're just going to try and remain as close as possible to the back of the Mustang so that when that penalty is served, we're definitely going to gain the position. Still right on the back of Key. Having half an eye there on Ape, who's now moved up into third as someone who I think we could catch up by the end of the race. Still a good sort of 20 minutes left in the race and therefore plenty of time for myself to get better to adapt to this tr uh, track and car combination. But also for Ape to perhaps make a mistake if the pressure uh, perhaps intensifies towards the end of the race as uh, we wind around towards Spoon Curve on the brakes, letting off the brake, really trying to roll the speed around here. And it really is cru uh, crucial. I suppose another big factor in these races is tyre wear. You're going to try and to, uh, make sure you don't wear your tyres out. Wear, wear your tyres out too much. I can't really say that properly. As the Mustang serves the penalty, loses the position, and we are going to gain quite a lot of time, as you can see, dropping very far back in the background. As now we can really focus our attention on moving forward. And I'm pretty sure we are gaining on Ape there for the battle for third. And so this is looking pretty good. We still have nine laps remaining to try to get that gap down. It is perhaps about three seconds at this point. You can see Dolty there at the other end of the straight. It might be difficult to catch up with him, but I would say a third place is definitely on the cards here. And let's not forget that ghost in the lead. Oh, actually, look at this. It's Goldie with a very big mistake through turn one and two. Must have got onto the AstroTurf and lost control i mean we've all done it and boom wow that's a, a a significant change in this race as the person i would have thought was easily going to win it has made a crucial error and is now three and a half seconds behind that doesn't rule them out of this race entirely as now 4.5 seconds behind they can still catch up with that sort of gap now i noticed key 25 was a lot quicker through 130r than me and also through this final chicane, um, a lot quicker, a lot smoother, and a lot earlier on the power, a lot braver with the power. And so it was this phase of the race here where I just couldn't quite match the pace of Key. I was getting into the 59s, which was better. The first half of the race I was in above two minutes. Ghost decides to go into the pit lane here. At the end of lap 13, it seems like a little bit long of a first stint and therefore he would have lost a lot of time. I'm guessing I should come out in front as we wind round onto the straight to begin lap number 14, moving up therefore into third as Ghost remains in the pit lane. So, funnily enough, after all of that, I'm now 2.3 seconds off of the lead. I didn't really expect to be fighting for first place. But after all of that, after all the crashes and uh, strategy errors from other players, I now find myself actually hunting down first place, albeit with Key 25 in the way as well. And so with seven laps to go, or six and a half now, we have some time here to try to catch back up with Ape, who I was right behind at the beginning, but it seems as though we've got uh, some good pace here in the second half of the race. Key 25 just pulling away, especially again through this final part of the lap, 130R and the chicane. I wasn't quite perfect through here a part of the track where I could improve as we round out underneath the Ferris wheel onto lap number 15. Goldie behind getting that gap down 3.1 at this point in time and the gap between myself and the leader 1.9 so it is slowly making its way in the right direction but it's not easy at this point we are driving very consistently and it seems like drivers are making not many mistakes actually so there's the fuel, and actually quite worryingly, I wasn't really checking this too much. Now we left the pit lane with 10.7 laps left of fuel, with 11 laps to actually do. Let's take a quick look here as we exit Spoon Curve. This is the end of lap number 17 now. We have just under three laps of fuel left to go, whereas I actually have to do about 3.2 laps from here to the end. So I definitely have a bit of a shortage of fuel. Uh, fuel. And so... For a couple of laps here, I decided, as I make a bit of a mistake there into turn one, I'm going to have to save a bit of fuel here and really just fight on the final lap. And as painful as it was to kind of let that gap increase to the car in front, 
I felt I had to do it just to make sure that I could preserve third place up against Goldie. He was quite quickly catching now. I decided to save fuel. On lap number 19 of 20 now. And I had to move into fuel mix 3. I mean, definitely better fuel management would be something I'd have to do in the next race. Either that or just go all out on fuel and then just add a little bit in at the pit stop. And with a much longer race, putting fuel in at the pit stop actually costs you less time overall. And therefore, it probably is more of a viable strategy to do that. So here we go then. Towards Spoon Curve, lap number 19. Penultimate lap now. And Golti there in the uh, the Valentino Rossi GT3 car livery. I do forget the team name that he drives for. I think it's WRT. Do correct me if I'm wrong. But he's catching up very quickly. In fact, only three tenths of a second behind. And really by this point, if I want to harbour any chances of winning this race, it's going to require the top two to be fighting significantly. And that is exactly what is happening. As you can see, into 130R, ape in the lead, going extremely defensive. And not only there, but also into the chicane as well. As you can see, side by side between the two of them. And as we come through ourselves... You can see we've gained quite a considerable amount of time here as they are still side by side. As we go on to the final lap, 20, 38 and a half minutes of racing so far. But we have two more left to do and it's the most important two left. As we are definitely gaining here, there's still a chance of getting a better result than third with Golti immediately behind. And so this could also go worse. I could even drop down a position here. So... I'll be really, really careful about trying to manage this race from here to the end. Through the S's, we should be okay through here. Saving a bit of fuel, I decided to do that because you might as well just save the fuel for the last sector where you really need the straight line speed. Then immediately back into power setting one and we'll stay here for the rest of the race. Four cars here within near enough a second on the final lap after... 20 laps of racing this is um this has been a really good race so far and it's going right down to the wire as we head into the hairpin for the final time look for the curb on the right as it ends hitting the anchors hitting the brakes off the brake let the car rotate the car feeling very clumsy by this point in time as we've now done at 11th lap on this set of tires the front end grip is really beginning to diminish i say beginning it's been doing that for quite a while it, it diminished a long time ago really into spoon curve and ape once again defensive key 25 really looking for that opening but it isn't quite appearing at this point with three corners left to go in the race incredibly close now between the four of us look at this battle between uh between the top four it really could change and unfortunately here into 130r just going to push a little bit too hard Look at that one pixel beyond the curb, and it's going to drag me wide onto the AstroTurf into the final corner. He's got around my outside, and he's jumped onto the podium, and that is so unfortunate. No change for the lead. I was hoping for something more than that. But after all of that, it was an amazing race. It's going to be a fourth place. Wow, what an incredible race that was. Two seconds between us. I'm quite annoyed that I couldn't get on the podium there, but... That worked. I mean, this format, this endurance format, 20 laps, 40 minutes, it made for an amazing race. I just did one race there. Hope you enjoyed that one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.